Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Trust and Believe. Today, I'm really excited. And y'all know I'm, I keep it very real here on the show. We had 10 minutes of mayhem. And so in my head, I, all of you know I wrote a book called Tears of Transformation. And one of the superpowers you have to use is to be flexible when, and get uncomfortable. And it was pretty uncomfortable in the beginning before we started here. And I'm so excited about my guest today that I was a little mad that it wasn't smooth as smooth can be. However... I feel because this incredible woman follows me on social media <laughs> that she gets me to the max, and I'm really excited about that. And today we have Miss Laura. We call you Miss Vital. Is it Vital or Vitale? How would you like me to say it? I go by Vitali, but you can call me whatever you want. Um, I go by Mrs. Vitali, Laura V, Vittles. Everyone calls me something different, so... Whatever you're most comfortable with. <laughs> well, it's just really funny because we have a nickname for you around here. We call you Miss Vital because I it love just makes, it. because of your incredible inspiration and your your personality and your ability to make cooking fun and look absolutely delicious. We wanted to come up with a name, but anyway, we're gonna talk to Miss. I'm gonna say Miss Vital. I and love it. <laughs> get ready to trust and believe in the cooking. Somebody say, hey, yeah. This is Sean T, and it's time to trust and believe. All right, Laura, how are you today? I'm good. I'm really excited that we were able to make this work. Uh, I feel like every time we've reached out, like timing hasn't been right, but I, I'm a big believer of like timing is everything and it's always out of your hands. So it was like, I'm feeling so inspired. My grandmom's here from Italy. So it just kind of feels like it was the perfect time to like get together and chat all things wonderful. I just feel like you have this incredible personality and I want to tap into that first. I want like what where does your personality come from? Do you have to conjure it up to be on camera? Do you is this how you feel? Like where does that inspiration and motivation come for you to really completely be yourself? One of the things that people always say to me when they meet me in real life, uh, and that be from people that have watched me for over 10 years to producers that have seen my content to Rachel Ray, they always say you're the same person behind the camera that you are in front of the camera. And I think that attributes to why I've been able to do this and grow consistently over the last decade. It's because I am who I am and I don't make apologies for that. I think we're at a time now where it feels really good to be your authentic self. And I'm just not shy about it. I'm very loud. I'm opinionated on things that I like, but I really am. I, th I always say my biggest flex is that I'm a huge cheerleader for everyone else because I want others to succeed. I want people to win. I am not a gatekeeper when it comes to any secrets I might have. If I love something, it just radiates. I am who I am. I love what I do. I am not a five-star chef. I never claimed to be, but I love what food and cooking represents so much that I just like to shout it from the rooftop. What was the beginning? Not even when you started, when was that moment where you felt like, I just love cooking? Because I love how you said, I'm not a five-star chef. Chef, some people might think you are, but <laughs> you know, I just love how you said I'm not a five star chef. But for me, that tells me that you really love what you do and it's not about being on top. So when did right. you kind of feel that love for cooking? My story when it comes to cooking is a little different than most people because I think some people just love to cook. They love to entertain. And that's obviously, uh, you know, definitely something that I love to do. I started cooking for a very different reason. I started cooking because I abruptly moved to the States when I was 12 years old and I didn't have any family with me except for my dad. And my dad was had just recently remarried and my stepmom at the time was pregnant with twins. I was 12 years old and I was extremely homesick. Now, when I was a little girl, because I was born in Italy and I grew up in Italy through my childhood, I thought I was going to be a makeup artist or a hairstylist when I got older. Like food was just not even, being into cooking was not even a thought because 
you just grew up in the kitchen. So to me, you know, being with my grandmom or my aunts or my mom cooking was just the norm. And it wasn't until I moved here and I was so homesick that I turned to cooking unexpectedly as a way to connect. So basically what ended up happening is that I was on the phone with my grandmom and I was sobbing because it was a Sunday and she was cooking. And I was young, I was not even 13. And she told me to just start cooking. And something really magical happened when I started cooking and the smells suddenly sort of like connected me to a place and time. At once I kind of felt that I just never let it go. So my love and appreciation for cooking is what it represents for me, which is just, it's family, it's tradition, it's making someone feel good. And my grandmom always jokes and says, there's just not a single expression that food can't help. If it's your birthday, she'll make you your favorite meal. If you got a job promotion, she'll make you a celebratory meal. If someone passed away, she'll make them something really comforting to cheer them up a little. So food has just always been that thing for me that I always, I always say that it's like the food that saved me because it was such a rough time in a young girl's life and the only thing I really had to turn to for comfort and drive really was cooking. And then that just sort of like was, once I felt that, there was just no stopping me. And then I cooked because I loved it and I loved how it made me feel. Then I transitioned to cooking in my dad's pizza shops. And then once those closed down due to 2008 economy, I was working in my husband's family business, which has nothing at all to do with cooking. But then little by little, I kind of felt really miserable. I felt like, you know, I'm so grateful for this job, but I'm sitting behind a desk putting together tractor trailer routes for, you know, wholesale plants. It's just not, it's just not where I belong. And my husband just said, you know, I think you really belong in the kitchen somehow and not working in a restaurant, but you belong talking to people about how important cooking can be and how fulfilling your kitchen table can be. Mm. And that's where this, his, this was, Laura in the Kitchen was 100% my husband's idea back in 2010. I thought he was nuts. I thought he was crazy. He fully believed in me way more than I did. Um, and so that's basically where Laura in the Kitchen was born. I had one too many glasses of wine one night and I agreed to start filming cooking videos and the rest is history. My career is health and fitness, right? But I'm also mm -hmm. a big advocate for 85-15 eating or if it's your birthday, we have calorie free days. You know, if it's a party, live your best life. What do you say to people who may love your cooking, but they're like, oh my gosh, they come and they're like, I don't know how to enjoy this, or I'm trying to lose weight, or like, how do you go about anyone that asks you about those type of things? Or are people just like, child, I'm just going to eat your meal because it's the bomb. I think probably the number one question I get asked every day is how do you cook so much and eat so much and stay in somewhat shape? Now, I'm not the fittest person in the world, but I feel really good in my body. I also don't fight against my body type which I think is really important. I'm never going to be a size two straight body. I'm just not. So I embrace how my body was built and I work, I work out because I feel good. I like to feel strong. I love to have energy because I have to run around after my five-year-old. So, you know, to me, I've never been one to do all or nothing, right? I could not live if I couldn't have carbs. I also couldn't live if I couldn't have fat. However, I'm perfectly fine living without things that are labeled 100 calorie snacks or sodas or you know the, the drinks that are like five, 600 calories that to me, first of all, I don't, I don't even enjoy them. And second of all, that five, 600 calories, I could have a plate, a rigatoni alla vodka that is so phenomenal with the same, if not better macros than that drink that some people just will pick up in the afternoon and drink and not even factor into their calorie intake can you for the just, day. Can you just say the name of that meal again? Can you just say it? I like the way you say it. Oh, rigatoni alla vodka. Mm. Yeah. I'm ready <laughs> think, to go eat. <laughs> I think having a really good balanced diet is key. I don't eat pasta every day, not because I can't, but because there are so many wonderful different options that I can choose from. Yesterday, it was a beautiful day and I grilled whole Mediterranean fish on the grill, served it with a beautiful salad, 
with roasted potatoes. And it, I, I can't even, I can't imagine anything better on a sunny day. To me, you can have it all. You can't have it all, all day, every day. You can certainly treat yourself anytime you want. And I think it's just finding the right balance of feeding foods that feel right for you. Some people I know really thrive on a keto way of eating because they love lots of dairy, higher fat. They don't really mind the lower carbs. They really don't eat very much fruit. And that's great. I couldn't live that way. I love, I don't eat a lot of dairy simply because when you grow up in a Mediterranean household, you really don't eat a ton of dairy. So that's not something that appeals to me. I love the Mediterranean way of eating. I feel fulfilled both in terms of like palate, but soul, and you have to just sort of apply that to your everyday way of eating. And I think once you find that balance, you really find the key to that food freedom that allows you to eat well, eat balanced, eat without guilt because life is short, food is delicious, it's nurture, it's nourishing, it's soul soothing um, and I think it should be enjoyed. So I just had this idea when you said you you talked about a food you had on a sunny day and I'm, I want to do like a really quick speed round quiz that just came up in my mind because I think this will be like super fun. Okay, are you okay. ready? I'm going to give you the rules. So the okay. rules are I'm going to give you like a weather or a place or, you know, a situation that has to deal with, really just has to deal with like either vacation or weather or something. And I want you to be, without even thinking, to tell me what meal you think goes good with that situation, okay? You hit me. All right, here we go. First one, Mykonos, out by the water, private romantic dinner, 72 degrees and sunny. Okay, start off with an amazing feta salad, which should be a block of feta, absolutely gorgeous heirloom tomatoes, and a little bit of fresh mint and oregano. Set that to the side, and then you have to have a fantastic lemon risotto served with, served with a grilled octopus with preserved lemons. Phenomenal. Mm. Phenomenal. Oh my gosh. I got, I've never gotten the chills from somebody telling me about food. Okay, next situation. New York on a patio, hot and steamy day, 90 degrees, very humid, but you still wanted to have a cookout on your pet on a on a friend's patio. I think you should start off with a ramp pesto toast, which is they're so fantastic when they're in season in the spring. So you have to have a ramp pesto toast. And then I would do a very very simple crab cake, nothing fancy about it, spring peas, a little smashed potato, not to be confused with mashed potatoes, with lots of herbs, and a fabulous citrus roasted garlic aioli. Nothing better, chilled rosé, rooftop, lots of it can be made in advance so you can really enjoy the weather because as we all know, a rooftop in New York City in perfect weather is not very common, so <laughs> Come gotta through. have the time for fun. All right, something a little more realistic snowy cold outside it's two days after the snow it's slushy it's dirty and you just are in a bad mood what would you cook to put yourself in a more comforting mood so if we're talking second day of snow chances are if day one you've probably made a roast chicken and you probably have leftovers so you take those leftovers and you make a chicken and leek pot pie which is so simple but so phenomenal serve that all by itself or with a really hot baguette with soft salted butter goodbye it's all, all right. i need oh, okay this is my last one okay this is more for me <laughs> suburbs family reunion out in the park you know you want to have kind of a buffet style what what's some stuff that you should have out there you've got to make a carnitas bar a carnitas bar is so stinking good and easy the carnitas can be made the day before and all you have to do is crisp it up and then do all the toppings we're talking charred corn pickled mm. onions really good guac a pico so fresh and full of lime i would take the tortillas and roast them ahead of time and keep them warm and then just set out a bar a little sour cream crema um, you could do a little bit of roasted tomatillo salsa set it up like a bar 
everything can be assembled at last minute but can be made ahead of time and everyone loves a taco or carnita bar I can tell you that everybody no rice necessary just do tons of guac tons of chips and tons of roasted corn okay this is my last question regarding this is there somewhere that people can find some of these recipes that you've made? I've got carnitas, I've got risottos, I've got lots of variations from what we spoke about on my website, elarainthekitchen.com. There's over a thousand recipes, so chances are if you're looking for something, you're gonna find it. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm smiling big. I'm smiling big. But I want to switch to something because that all felt really great. And I know kind of going back to the coming of age story, how, you know, you came here, you were young and cooking was a thing that really helped you thrive in a way. What was a point in your career? Because this podcast is called Trust and Believe. What was the point in your career where you either wanted to give up or it was just really a, a, a big struggle and you just kind of had to find your way through some sort of maze like what was that and what did you do and tools did you do to kind of get pushed through I would say the first year was really filled with highs and lows it was sort of like the oh it's so exciting this is kind of working coupled with it's never gonna go anywhere it's so time-consuming because at the time I was also working a full-time job I worked a full-time job until 2013 so you know it was almost three years of working on this that i was working a full-time job um and so something that people just don't realize i don't know i'm certain that things have changed now but you know 10 years ago almost i think 12 years ago when i started there was no instant getting paid it was you have to work really hard you have to build essentially build an actual brand, um, have lots of consistency before you can make a dime. So I was essentially working on this for free using any of, and all of my savings to, you know, improve camera, improve lighting. And my husband and I were worth working full-time jobs. And it got to a point where um, it was, so we started January 2010. And in July of 2011, we went on a cruise with some friends. And I was sitting on the cruise, and this is a story that I've told a million times because I speak a lot on panels because people always say, what is the, what was the moment that like something clicked? I was, before going on that cruise, I thought, well, it's just a nice hobby, but it's just never really going to turn into anything, right? So it was kind of feeling like, not that I was going to give up, but I just wasn't going to work much harder at it because it just wasn't going to grow into anything phenomenal. Something happened when I was on that cruise where... I was sitting on the balcony, I was talking to my husband, and I'm not even sure where the conversation started, but my, my, my husband said to me, you have to be crazy to think that this can't lead to something amazing. He says to me, you are so determined, yet you're not believing in yourself mm -hmm. because you're not really giving it your all. And when he said that to me, I knew he was right. I knew he was right. And I thought to myself, I'm gonna make a pact. I'm gonna make a pact with myself. I am going to upload one video per day, every day for six months. I had nothing else to lose. Certainly I had some sleep to lose because I would have to film at night after my full-time job. But aside from that, I had nothing to lose. I knew that if I did that, I could never say I didn't give it my all. I could never say, oh, I wish I had tried harder. What started happening is once that happened, I would say within 30 days, the trajectory went except it, it, from going like this to going like this, right? And it just kind of went faster and faster and faster. And I was able to maintain that one a day upload for nine months. I surpassed my six month goal by three months. And by that point, we had grown like 250,000 subscribers, which was incredible because we started at like, by the time I was having this conversation with my husband, we were like at 25,000. So think about the growth that it, it had. And by that point, the content and the consistency and the dedication really just spoke for itself. And that just got the attention of partner managers with YouTube that were giving me different opportunities, started working with actual brands who could see an actual future working with me. And I was really honest with myself. Mm -hmm. That's when the change really happened. Nothing was going to just come to me. I wasn't going to sit there and wait for a video to go viral because it's food. So food hardly ever really goes viral, especially, you know, 10 years ago. Once I believed in myself and I gave it 
thousand percent, that's when the change started. That's sort of that saying of like, nothing changes if nothing changes, mm. right? Nothing was going to change until I made a drastic change and I just decided I was going to give it my all. Now, that's obviously not going to be realistic to everyone to upload once a day, depending on the content that you make. But once you really give it your all in whatever field you're in and you believe in yourself, I think that's when you start to see the difference. That's when you start to see the growth. And that's what happened to me. Once I was honest with myself and I said, you know, you're not giving in your all. You're sort of putzing around with a video here or there. You, you can now sit here and say, well, I didn't give it my all, so obviously I'm not growing. But if you give it your all, then you can never say, I wish I had tried harder. And that's what happened. And once I did that, it, there was just no stopping me at that point. By that point, I could slow down in my full-time job. Brand opportunities started to come. And it was just, you know, by that point, it, it was going ha- to happen. I was going to host TV. I was going to write cookbooks. I was going to speak on panels. I was going to connect with amazing people like you. Um, and there was just no stopping me at that point. I just wanted to take opportunity to really dig into what you were saying, which is your commitment to six months became nine months, became 250000 which became you being able to change your life in a better way to lead into today you doing probably what you wanted to do tenfold if i could guess you know Mm -hmm. and the opportunities you've had to be in front of so many people i have a community on facebook called the unity community we're doing something called um an in the kitchen challenge when you're home if you're not if you're not traveling to cook in the kitchen because i believe during the pandemic and even before And even after when people start moving around, a lot of people find it easier to order out. You know, we have Uber Eats, we have DoorDash, we have Grubhub, we have Seamless Web, we have all these opportunities for us to not take the opportunity to enjoy the kitchen. And so I believe that a lot of people are too tired or they think it's too tough. So do you have any tips for people to set up their kitchen so that It can be easier, it can be fun, it can be manageable, it can be a great experience for them. I think something that people have to kind of understand is that there is time and place and joy in our life and diet for things that you just don't feel like cooking. I'm never going to roll my own sushi. (laughs) <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going to. I'm just going to make it real clear. So I have no problem ordering takeout once in a while, right? But I also feel like I think everyone should understand and learn the basics of cooking, right? Mm. The basics of cooking will take you really far. Sometimes ordering Uber Eats takes 10 times longer than it takes for you to whip something up really fast. That's so delicious, probably better for you, certainly cheaper, right? But learn the basics. So to me, I think every person should learn to saute something, whether it's sauteing some vegetables, Cooking a pot of rice, which sounds wild, but you'd be surprised at how many people just don't know how to cook a pot of rice. Crisping up some chicken breast, roasting a chicken thigh. These are very basic things that anyone can start with. Once you learn those basics, there's there's no limits to what you can do. I mean, you can marinate chicken thighs in the morning with lemon, olive oil, herbs, and garlic. Stick them into your fridge. When you're done work, when you come home from work, Take them out for 15 minutes while your oven's preheating. Put them into the oven for half an hour. And in that time, cook up a pot of rice. Maybe chop up some fresh vegetables. If you don't have fresh vegetables, every grocery store sells a a bag of frozen vegetables. Thaw those frozen vegetables, season them a little bit, and you have a really wonderful, easy meal like that. Learn how to make a pot of really good marinara sauce, which takes five ingredients, olive oil, garlic, tomatoes, basil, and salt. Learn how to make a good pot of marinara sauce. Serve that over top of chicken, and then you put a little parm on it and a little moths, and now you have chicken parm. You can do the same thing with eggplant if you want to, or spaghetti. It doesn't really get any, any harder than that. And it's 10 times better than what you can buy. It certainly is a lot cheaper, and it's so much better for you. You can control the quality of olive oil you're putting into your food and the amount of it. You can control the quality of tomatoes that you're using. The higher the quality of tomato, the less need it has for sugar to sweeten them up. So if you're starting to learn the basic, learn how to fry an egg, learn how to make a scrambled eggs. I don't know about you, but I'm always down for breakfast for dinner. 
always. Scramble some eggs. I love bacon. Do not come at me with the turkey bacon. It is not the same. I like real fatty, crispy bacon. That may be a piece of toast and you're good to go, but now you've learned the basics of frying a really good egg, of crisping up a really good egg. Maybe you like a scrambled, maybe you like a sunny side up. I always encourage people to really learn the basics because there really is nothing. That, that's, that's like when I started working out, right? I could not go from nothing to insanity. There was just, there's just no way. There was no way, right? It's going to have a freaking heart attack. So I bought, uh, what did I buy? What is that thing? I keep wanting to call it a Peloton, but it was not Peloton. Um, an elliptical. I bought an oh. elliptical and I thought, I'm going to start here. If I can do this for 10 minutes this week, next week it's going to be 15 minutes. And then I just sort of like got better and better at that. And then I started venturing into the insanity. I started venturing into the other <laughs> things. And, but I certainly couldn't go from zero to 100. So that's the same thing with food. Start with the basics. Once you really perfect them to your liking, then branch out. You know what I mean? You learn to make a marinara sauce today. Next week, you'll learn to make a piccata. The week after that, you learn to make a bolognese. But you, you've got to start at the very basic in order to get to the top. What are some basic, fundamental things you can do to not have food be bland? We'll do vegetables, chicken, a meat, and even, you know, us like just a simple spaghetti. So... There are two ingredients that I use every day and I use them very well and I'm not afraid. One is good olive oil and one is very good salt. I use a coarse kosher salt. When you use those two things properly, salt is a flavor enhancer, right? If you don't salt something or you don't salt it enough, you can add every spice in your cabinet and it tastes like nothing. It's not until you add salt because that's what its job is. Its job is to enhance anything it touches, which is why it goes into desserts as well. Until you add salt and a good amount of it, it's going to taste bland. I think people are so afraid of fat and they're so afraid of sodium. It is wild. That's not, that is not of concern, I can tell you that. Using good olive oil, very good olive oil and a good amount of salt will transform anything that you cook. I also really love to have granulated garlic, onion, smoked paprika is so mm. underused, but it is so phenomenal. And you add that to roast potatoes and now you go from like a regular roast potato to like a smoky, a little bit of chili powder. Now it's smoky and spicy roast potato. It's dynamite. I love to keep things on hand like sazon. I love to keep things on hand like adobo. I love making my own concoctions with dried herbs and garlic and onion and dried um, peppers and tomatoes and chili, and it's going to transform anything. But until you add a good amount of salt, it's still going to taste like nothing. So learn to use salt and, and olive oil well, and then just include things that you like and that you know go well together. You can take a bag of frozen vegetables and if you saute them with a little bit of butter a little bit of garlic and some seasonings and salt it is so freaking good i mean some nights it's really all i have time for but it's delicious do you know what i mean i do i, I think do. people are afraid i think when i see like a little like a little what the hell is that give, give give me don't be afraid it's not gonna bite you it might be a little spicy which fine with me, me but it's, too. <laughs> it's not, it's not going to bite you. Go heavy handed with the herbs, go heavy handed with the lime, go heavy handed with the garlic. It's not going to bite you. It's not going to, you know, make something not edible. It's going to make it the opposite, but learn to use salt properly because that's what makes all of those flavors bloom. It's interesting you say that because when I started cooking for my husband, he would always be, or even if he cooks sometimes, he said, can you season this? And I'm like, really, the, the thing that I use the most is salt. And I remember when I started uh, cooking steak in a cast iron skillet, which is my favorite way to cook mm -hmm. it, more than, a, more than a grill, more than anything. Because, 100%. You know, I was reading a recipe this time, and it said, don't be afraid to use salt. And I was like, I use a lot of salt. But it was like, put some salt on there. And so mm -hmm. I did it, and I was just like, oh, my God. Like, it was just so... Amazing. It's life-changing, right? 
It it's is. It's life changing. And I think people see me use salt and they get kind of worried. But say I take a piece of steak because I like a thick steak. Don't you be giving me no thin. Absolutely not. I love <laughs> a cast iron seared steak. I like a nice fat one. And then I baste it with some herbs and I baste it with some butter. But then when I slice it, right, it needs salt. When and tell I, them how to slice a piece of a steak. When I, you slice it on a bias and you slice it sort of on an angle. And then yeah. when you fan it, you have to sprinkle it with salt because you never season the inside, right? So now the outside has a gorgeous salty crust, but the inside's bland. So take a little pinch of salt and when you fan it out after slicing, just add a little bit of salt and it just world of a difference. Even if you're taking roasted vegetables, right? Season them well, otherwise they taste like nothing. My last question, which is what I ask everybody, you've went through the process of, you know, your ups or your downs and then your ups and you have success and people see you on TV and you have, you know, tons of subscribers. How would you define the ability to trust and believe in oneself? I'm not sure what you're capable of doing because I'm not you, but I know what I'm capable of doing. And I think people often underestimate themselves. I do. And I think the same thing I spoke about earlier when it came to me not giving it my all, I think it applies to everyone. And I think everyone, you know, and I go through stages in, in my in my career where I'm working on different projects and I hold myself back a little because I'm not sure if I should be my full authentic self on it. But, you know, I have to believe in myself. I, I know what I'm capable of doing. And, and until I put my foot to the ground and I stand firm in who I am and what my beliefs are and what I know I can bring to the table. There's no limit to what I can do. You know, I did a shoot the other day for a project I can't quite speak about, but you know, obviously it has to do with food. And there's a whole team of people here that, that work with tons of other people. And the photographer said to me, you radiate when you talk about your food. You radiate when you talk about what it is that you do. And I said, listen, I am not confident in everything in life because I certainly know that there are areas that other people are way better at than I am. But when it comes to who I am, what I'm talking about, and my food, I am a thousand percent confident in it because I know what I'm capable of and I know it's right and I know it's good and I know people love it and I know it makes people feel good. And I feel like that's probably how you feel when you put together a program, right? I think you know what you're capable of doing and you go through the process of putting your best foot forward and believing in yourself and you might have ups and downs along the way, but you stand firm to who you are and what you know how to do well. And I think people, if people believed in themselves a little bit more, we'd have a world of successful cheerleaders for others, kind, driven humans. I really believe that. I think it all stems from people just not believing enough in themselves. Anytime I've spoken on panels and I've heard the question, you know, what, how can I do what you do? My answer is always the same. Believe in yourself and in the content you want to make. All you need after that is a camera, and that could be an iPhone, it could be a $5,000 camera, and it could be a $49 Canon camera. It doesn't matter. Nothing begins without one believing in themselves fully, authentically, and unapologetically. Like, I know that I'm not everyone's cup of tea. But I know that I do my very best to make people feel welcome and good and safe and comforted. And that's, that's just who I am. And I think that translates into what I do. So one believing in themselves is the fundam it's fundamental in, in them achieving anything they want to achieve. That's, my, that's what I got to say about that. When you said someone says, how do I do what you do? It's like, you're not supposed to do what I do. You're supposed you do to do what, what you, want. you do. You're supposed to do what you want and do what you do and do it great. Because I just believe that everyone has something really great that they can do. And you say that to some people and they say, but I don't really have it. And I, that's why I let my kids dress the way they want to dress, whether it's a 
dress or a tiara. Like one of my kids wanted to go, wanted to have a Peppa Pig, um, <laughs> he wanted to have a Peppa Pig tea party and he went to Target and got a dress. And when I tell you he posed in that, I said, come the fuck through. Like I was <laughs> here for it, you it. know? I love it. And, and I think we don't, we don't hear that enough. We don't hear, you know, you're not supposed to, to be me, you're supposed to be you. And I want you to celebrate that. For the love of God, we have so many of the same thing. Right now, if you go on the internet, everyone looks the same. Everyone just to have the same style. And I, you know, when, when did celebrating individuality go out of style? I just want to say that. Like my daughter, same with your, with your kids choosing to, you know, uh, dress themselves. About a year ago when she started school, it was a struggle to get her to get dressed in the morning because she just wants to wear what she wants. And oftentimes that was like a summer dress in the middle of January. So she would put on 14 layers of other things. And I thought, I spoke to a, a child therapist, which I think that's a whole different conversation, but I think therapy is just like so chef's kiss. Mm. I'm going to be looking into it for myself next week, which I'm very excited about. I have an oh, appointment for yay. that. Good but, for and then she said to me, you know, think about, how little control your daughter has over her life. Think about that. You choose where she goes to school. You chose what she does. You choose. Give her something to choose. Give her something to take control over. And if that has to do with her dressing, let her do it. And you know what happened? I never realized my daughter was so quirky. I thought my daughter was this picture perfect girly girl, but in she wears baseball hats backwards with my husband's sunglasses, sneakers, I mean, and, and summer dresses on top of it. Let's and go. I never would have realized that if I just didn't celebrate her individuality and who she is. And I think to your point, you're not supposed to do what I do, you're supposed to do what you do. And do it with such authenticity that it makes you stand out. You're mm. not supposed to be everybody's cup of tea. I don't want to be. Because then the world would be really boring, wouldn't it? Laura, thank you very much. You just might drop that. I'm, I don't have nothing else to say. <laughs> I have nothing else to say except for thank you and thank you for blessing my listeners and hopefully your new supporters with just so many incredible moments because I think there's a lot of takeaway from food. Oh my God. <laughs> to the kitchen, to flavor to your own individual flavor of life. I just appreciate you so much and thank you for finally for time coming together for us to spend a little bit of time together. I love it. I'm so thankful. So thank you.